Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me once again today for another Dominions 5 Basic Nation Analysis. And this time we are taking on a nation that is, well, let's say not top of the pack. This time we are discussing Middle Age Machaka. Now, Middle Age Machaka is one of those nations that's kind of tough to play. Uh, and a big part of why they're tough to play is that they're just sort of not good. Um, they're a little lackluster in a lot of ways. Um, and the, their, how do I say it? Their sum is less than the whole of their parts, uh, which is really very unfortunate. They're, they're one of the older nations. They were created, I believe, back in Dominions 3, um, introduced, or yeah, Dominions 3, before the, when the Middle Age was the modern Late Age, effectively, and included Ermor and various other nations. Lemuria didn't exist yet. Um, and they were created sort of like... <clears throat> This was the original Machaka. We played Early Age Machaka before. Middle Age Machaka came before them. And Middle Age Machaka is uh, mythologically very strange in that they're not really... They don't really seem to be derived from the mythology. Like, they're based off of some kind of African something. But they're not really directly derived from African mythology in a recognizable way. At least not nearly as recognizably as Early Age mythology is. And a lot of the stuff they have access to is just very odd. On top of that, as I said, they're not exactly a superpower. But let's dive into them. Let's take a look. Um, in terms of units, the most interesting thing you'll notice immediately is that Machaka has access to a number of spider writing units um, of varying degrees of usefulness. In order, you have the basic spider writers. And the basic spider writers are very, very cheap in resources, but fairly high in recruitment points. Um, the problem with them is that they have 10 hit points from the writer. So hit points in this, these units are derived from the rider, not the spider, um, and size 5, so they only fit one in a square, and protection 0, so they die like flies. Archers massacre spider riders. As such, spider riders are not actually very good, despite the fact that their weapon stat line looks crazy good. Um, they're not, and there's a couple reasons they're not. First, I mean, yes, protection 0, hit points 10. Uh, and size 5, so if an arrow lands in the square, it's almost certain to hit them, and if it hits them, it's probably going to kill them. Um, the other reason is, these attacks don't actually stack up as well as it might look like, looks like they might. So, Web Spit and Shortbow are both ranged attacks, but Shortbow is range 35, meaning they want to sit back and fire that, and Web Spit is range 8, meaning they want to be right behind the front line in order to fire that. So if you give these guys a fire order, they'll stay back to shoot their Shortbow, instead of using their Web, which otherwise would be very handy, because the Web you know, webs people and makes them unable to move or defend themselves until they get rid of it. And if you tell them to attack, they'll rush into melee and they won't use the web spit. So realistically, this attack almost never gets used. Um, in melee, they actually only have two attacks, the spider fangs and the spear. Now having two attacks is great, especially because the spear, normally length three, gets artificially boosted to length four because they're on a large mount, which makes it better for them repelling. Um, and the spider fangs have death poison, which is fantastic. However, it's not terribly strong. I mean, 14 piercing is nothing to sneeze at and will work most of the time. But still, it's not great. And then they have this web attack, which can tie people up in melee. That is, that's good, that's good. This is a good combination of attacks. That would be fine. So, okay, I misspoke. They have three attacks, it's only two of them do damage. Um, this would be fine, except once again, they're just so fragile. So they're not really worth anything. The spider knights are a lot better because they have 17 protection. Now, if you may notice, um, spiders are actually fairly slow. Combat speed 13, combat speed 12. But what that means is you can mix spider knights in with infantry. They're size 5, so they can't share squares with infantry. But they can move in with the infantry in squares adjacent to them. And in this context, um, the spider knights work a lot better. With 17 protection, uh, resource cost still below gold cost and only about half recruitment point cost, or a little higher than half. So much more reasonable. And they still have that combination of attacks. They've got the spider fangs, the web, and the spear. So they web someone up, they get to attack twice with the spear and the spider fangs. They can actually contest against a square of low to mid-tier infantry without too much trouble. Now, they're priced like heavy cavalry, and they're not as good as most heavy cavalry. Um, because their defense skill is lower, their protection is fairly unexceptional for heavy cavalry. The one thing they really do have going for them is, once again, they can repel with the spears, which is pretty decent. Um, their encumbrance isn't high, so only encumbrance four, all told, so they can fight for quite a while. Um, they're not bad. They're, they're okay. They're decent. And then you have your sacreds, the black hunters, and the problem with the black hunters is, well, 
They're priced like Anakites, and Anakites they are not. So, Black Hunters, 115 gold. They cost more than some of your mages. Uh, 21 protection, very good. Morale 14, good. Magic resistance 11, okay. Attack skill 12, defense skill 13. That seems slightly low for a heavy cavalry unit priced at 115. That's a little bit low, but okay. Workable. Hit points, 13. That's a problem. Now, the reason why their hit points are 13 are, is Black Hunters have a second shape. Um, when the, the the Black Hunter himself, the Rider, is killed, um, they transform into just the giant spider, like Zayedans do. And you may think, oh, well, that's great. Zayedans are fantastic. It's less great than you're thinking. Uh, when the Black Hunter transforms, well, let me pull up their stat line. We're gonna we're gonna hop out. We're gonna be popping back and forth in this. Uh, in this showcase. Let's hop out into the Mod Inspector and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are in the Mod Inspector and here you can see the two different shapes of this unit. You've got the Black Hunter and then you have the Hunter Spider. So when this guy dies, which only takes 13 points of damage and even through Prot 21 on a size 6 monster with a mediocre defense skill, that's pretty easy to get to. He turns into a Hunter Spider. So now, looking at this stat line, that doesn't look too terribly bad, but there's two things that really stand out. First, Magic Resistance five and animal so it's a creature it has super super low magic resistance and so magic once it transforms will absolutely destroy it despite the fact that it has 55 hit points in particular these guys can be enslaved very easily or charmed there's a special spell that charms animals in nature magic it's very powerful against them secondly um although it doesn't show this on in the mod inspector for some reason this unit is stupid it has the stupid trait, and the stupid trait, um, well, it's really, really bad. The stupid trait gives it a random chance to do nothing or attack an allied unit every single turn. It doesn't proc often, but it is just kind of another, another downside. And of course, it loses the spear and the lance. All it has is the venomous fangs, which do actually less damage in this form, and the web. So, for comparison's sake, for comparison's sake, Let's pull up Jayedans, all right? A Zayedin is 125 gold, so only 10 gold more than a Black Hunter. It loses one point of protection. Same stats down here. However, higher strength, higher attack, higher defense skill, and it flies. And its attacks are better. The bite is 18 damage, the claw is 16, the spider fang is only 16. It doesn't have the web, but it also has a broadsword, which gives it an attack and defense buff. And then it has the lance. Um, which is better than, and the broadsword overall is just a better attack than the spear. It can't repel as well, but it's a better attack. Then it turns into a Turin Griffin, and Turin Griffins are way better than Hunter Spiders. Um, they've got higher protection, they've got almost triple the magic resistance for no real reason, since animals usually have very low magic resistance, that's not true of the Griffins. Um, their defense skill is very low, that's true, but with 19 protection, 44 hit points, 2 attacks, and sacred status, um, plus, once again, flying, they don't really need it so much. So, this is by far the, the closest comparison, is Zayedin to Black Hunters, and for 10 gold extra, the Zayedins get so much extra that it makes them a, a much more powerful unit. Hunter, Black Hunters are basically super, super cheesy knockoff Zayedins. Um, which makes them not nearly as good. Now, they can still carry a really powerful bless, but there are other things about the nation that make you not want to take a super powerful bless. Hop back into the game. I'll show you how well I've done. I've actually gone, a, I haven't got a full year up. It's a little bit earlier because I did want to show you one thing. So I'll see you back in the game. Okay, so here we are back in game. It's turn 10. Um, my expansion has actually been pretty decent, because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 provinces. That's despite a bump and losing my god, um, due to Arcosophale up here. We'll talk about that in a second. But so, expansion is pretty good, because even effectively unblessed Black Hunters, not that one, even effectively unblessed Black Hunters do a pretty good job against independence. So you can see here I've got a pack of black hunters. I don't have much of a bless on them. These are all lion tribe. Um, I did lose one in this battle, which does not bode well for them. But you can see my bless is... Where's one that got blessed? 
Looks like none of them may have gotten blessed. Wow. Here's one. Uh, morale plus one because my god is dead. My only blessing effect was hard skin, which bumped their prot up to 23, effectively. And there was a totally different reason I took it. I didn't, I didn't take it for them. They were effectively unblessed. But unblessed, you can see, they chew through infantry really quick. They, they, do, they do an okay job. And I'm not sure where I lost one. I lost one. Ah, yes, there's a hunter spider. So I took a random lucky hit that went through the armor and just killed a rider outright. Um, that happens. It just it, it just happens. So hunter spider, you can see here. Ba -ba -da -ba -da, repelled, repelled. This is the value of that long spear. You can repel a lot of attacks. Um, but you can see here, somebody got an armor defeating hit and a couple of exploding dice hit the black hunter for 19 points of damage past his reduced protection. And so the black hunter just died. And so the, the Hunter Spider is going on to fight. So you can see, they do a pretty good job. They can expand. Uh, a couple turns worth of recruitment of Black Hunters can expand very effectively. Um, also, Machaka gets some other units that can be used to expand very effectively once you've cleared out some of your cap circle and got a whole bunch of resources. So expansion, not bad. I've got money. It's turn 10. I've got one Palisade built upgrading to a fort. I'm looking for a place to start my second one, probably down here. In the Dragon Scale Mountains would be a good spot, so I'm going to recruit a commander there. Start another fortress. Um, yeah, things are going alright. Things don't really start to fall apart for Middle-Age Machaka until slightly later in the game. The reason things fall apart for Middle-Age Machaka is um, the rest of their troop lineup. So you've got these spiders. The spiders are expensive. You can't have all that many of them. Only the spider knights are actually what I would call good. The black hunters are solid but overpriced. And the spider riders are bad. So... In terms of other troops, you've got pygmies. Pygmies are very cheap short bows. You can cast flaming arrows on them because you have fire magic. They're, they're good at that. You've got Machaka Militia. Machaka Militia are too cheap to be useful, mainly because their defense skill and their prot are both very low. Their prot is actually zero, so they just die very quickly, and they have morale eight, so when they start dying, the rest of the unit runs, and then they route the rest of your army. Machaka Archers. There just isn't any reason to recruit them in a, a lineup where you also have pygmies, because they do very little damage, 9 damage versus the pygmies doing 7. They have the same range, so since you're going to be casting flaming arrows in any battle that matters, there's no real reason to have Machaka archers that take up more space and cost more and take longer to recruit, when you can just pump out a million pygmies instead. Machaka warriors? Uh, these are lion tribe. They're literally independent lion tribe warriors. Uh, that you can recruit. And Lion Tribe Warriors are weak. They're weak because they only have a basic spear with a basic middling attack. They do have a javelin, but once again, prot zero. So as soon as they get into combat, they start dying like flies. Machaka Warriors with the longer spears, same problem. Low attack skill, low defense skill, or mediocre defense skill rather, zero protection. They don't wear armor. That makes them very, very bad as chaff. Then you have the Machaka Hoplites. Machaka Hoplites are the the other kind of decent base unit that you can recruit everywhere. Machaka Hoplites are sort of like a, a, a bad late age unit in the middle age. They have high resource cost, a uh, high recruitment point cost as well, 18. Um, 17 protection, so pretty good. Formation fighter, so you can put four in a square. They have the long Machaka spear, so they can repel attacks. And they have a middling decent defense score. These guys can be useful. High protection helps them help keep them in the fight. Um, repel helps keep them in the fight. They have a shield. It's not a good shield, but it is a shield. So it only has prod 11, but it can still help. So they get broken a lot, but they can help against arrows and such. Uh, encumbrance 7 means their, uh, their endurance is limited, but they can work. Machaka hoplites are okay, and they have forest survival, so you can move quickly through forests. Then you have your spiders, which we've talked about. So in terms of recruit anywhere, Machaka hoplites, pretty good or decent, just expensive in terms of resources. Uh, pygmies, good for the price, just like they were in the early age. Spider archers would be really good, because they have these poison bows that have the, a poison effect, so if you shoot a whole bunch of spider archers at someone, you'll start poisoning their units and hurt them over time. It can be a very effective way to whittle down chaff. However, they cost 20 recruitment points, so you can't actually mass them. You can recruit them in your capital and any other forest fort that you have. So this fort, for example, I can recruit spider archers. But, like I said, they require 20 recruitment points. So if you're recruiting them, you can't recruit much else. I could recruit 12 per turn in Machaka itself. Um, but there's other things I want to recruit in Machaka. 
Then you have Spider Warriors. These are your last troops. They're capital only, but not sacred. So these are capital only sacred. These are capital only, not sacred. Very expensive in resources and recruitment points, but quite strong. 19 protection, very, very high. Ambidextrous dual wielding. They have dark vision for some reason, because makes them better, I guess. Um, good attack skill, low defense skill, because of their very low their very heavy armor. But that's okay in mass, because since they're putting out six attacks per square, and their attacks are actually quite high quality, um, they tend to kill things that are attacking them pretty quickly. So spider warriors? Yeah, I like spider warriors, to be honest. They're good. Um once you've captured most of your cap circle, and so you have a lot of resources, you can actually expand very effectively with spider warriors. Let me show you. There was this battle in Dragon Scale Mountains. This is a spider warrior expansion party. It's two turns of recruitment after capturing most of my uh, cap circle. So I was recruiting six spider warriors, and then the next turn I recruited five spider warriors and two Machaka hoplites just to kind of mix them in there because they have a lower resource cost, being led by an Eye of the Lord, which I'll get to in just a second. And they're going up against a pretty middling, easy indie province, but one that has some heavy infantry and a whole bunch of militia. And the Spider Warriors very effectively go in, and they just carve these guys up with no losses. They take a little bit of damage. You know, they take chip damage, they suffer reflections. But, um, they cut through them without taking any actual casualties, I don't believe. Because that high prot in combination with the, the double attacks means they can chew through enemy infantry very, very quickly. So they're solid. On top of that, Spider Warriors are stealthy. They have stealth 40. So if you lead them with a stealthy commander, they can do a lot of work. You can you can make them into raiding parties and steal enemy provinces. You can do sort of a, a budget elf attack, which is nice. So troop-wise, you've got a couple of decent options. You've got the Spider Knights, you've got the Machaka Hoplites, you've got the Spider Warriors, and you've got the Pygmies. The thing they have in common, all of your decent options, is that besides the Pygmies, they all cost a lot of resources. Many more resources than they do anything else. And they cost a lot of recruitment points. So Machaka Hoplites, resources of recruitment points. Spider Knights, recruitment points primarily. Spider Warriors, resources and recruitment points too. So that would seem to tell you that you need a lot of scales, right? Well, kind of. But if you take a lot of scales, it can be hard to expand because these guys you can't mass before you've already expanded some. And you can't really black hunters either. And Machaka Hoplites, you can't really mass at any time. I mean, I can recruit 8 Spider Warriors or 10 Machaka Hoplites, and given that choice right now with the number of resources I have, given that choice, I'll go for the Spider Warriors every time. Machaka Hoplites are just a little bit too resource intensive for what they give you to be a really good unit. They're an okay unit. Um, however, the problem comes when you start looking at commanders. You've got scouts. They're just basic scouts. You've got Machaka Chiefs. They're basic 60 leadership commanders. You've got Machaka Commanders, which are 80 leadership commanders that cost some resources. That's all fine. You've got Spider Lords, which are spider-mounted commanders. And I don't know why you'd ever buy them. Um, they don't actually give you anything in terms of commandership over Machaka Commanders. They just cost 40 gold extra. That's all. Um, they're the same combat speed. They have approximately the same skills. They have the same protection. Uh, they have more melee attacks, but you don't want your commanders in melee. So anyway, I digress. You have three different flavors of priest. Ear of the Lord, no leadership, spy, priest, two recruitment points. Eye of the Lord, one recruitment point, priest, commander, patrol bonus, and also tax collector, which isn't really relevant, but... Patrol bonus is good. And then Voice of the Lord, who is holy too, and that's the only special thing about him. Mostly you're going to be recruiting this guy because he's a priest and a leader, so that's very nice. He can build temples, he can patrol, he can lead your expansion parties. Solid. Those guys are okay. You have a you have a national spy, which is always cool. Um, when you get into the mages, you start to see the cracks develop. Because Witch Doctors, your first mage, are garbage. Um, 80 gold for 7 research points, that's their best feature. Uh, they give you 7 research points for 80 gold. If you're taking magic scales, they're efficient researchers, but not fast researchers. And pathwise, they're just not impressive. One fire, one death, one nature, can't really do anything. Except basic sight searching and casting, uh, they can cast dark knowledge to remote sight search for death spells, and they're cheap. And that's all they have going for them. Sorcerers? are actually fairly powerful mages, 
but they're also kind of expensive. They cost about 200 gold. Now, 200 gold for five paths, which is what they have, normally wouldn't be a bad deal, but their paths are incredibly scattered. They've got one fire, one death, two nature, and then they random fire, death, nature, or earth. Which means that 25% of these guys end up with a 1-1-2-1 one, one, one path spread, which is very hard to make super useful. 25% um, of them end up with Nature 3, which is good. 25% end up with Death 2, which is fine. And 25% end up with Fire 2, which is... Eh, okay, but not exactly what you want to be paying 195 gold for. So, half of these guys are very much worth less than what you pay for them. Half of them are probably more or less like, okay, I'll accept it with the death too. And then a quarter of them, or a quarter of them rather are that way. And then a quarter of them are nature three, which is pretty solid. Having a quarter of your 195 gold standard mages be pretty solid is not good. You also have the hunter lord, who is a black hunter sacred commander. That's fine. Every nation has something like him. Your capital only is dreadful. The Black Sorcerer. He's cheap, which is something of a saving grace, but awful. 210 gold, slow to recruit, old, and he's he's a Buddha. He's a Buddha with an added nature random, and none of the qualities that make Buddhas really good. He doesn't have the forge bonus, he doesn't have stealth, he doesn't have the second shape, and he's old, so he gets diseases and dies during the winter, and he's so old that the unaging bless does not make him not old, and he has enormous penalties to everything. His encumbrance is high for a mage, his HP is low, uh, his map move is slow. Uh, he's just got very little by way of good qualities. Now, he's a pretty powerful caster. Um, he can random Earth 3, he can random Fire 3, he can random Death 2. Of course, he can also random Nature 1, which is not useful with this path spread. So 25% of these guys just end up randomly a lot less useful than any of the others. Um, otherwise, these are good paths. Like, don't get me wrong, this is a good path combo right here. It's just... It's on a bad chassis and it's slow to recruit capital only. So, black sorcerers... I mean, I mean the funny thing about them is black sorcerers are literally shitty Buddhas. They literally have all the powers of Buddhas, but in every other way they're garbage and they're slow to recruit capital only. So, compared to early age Machaka, it's a little bit of a slap in the face. <laughs> like, like, you guys took over from the Buddhas and the Lion Clan? Really? Really? I'm surprised. They come with a Bane Blade, which is kind of weird, but cool, um, that they, that they have this thing. So if they ever get caught in melee, they might be able to decay a guy before they're instantaneously killed. So, yeah. Black Sorcerers are an interestingly schizophrenic unit, because on the one hand, the fact that they're so heavily random dependent means you want to be pumping out as many of them as possible, but on the other hand, the fact that they're so heavily random dependent means you really don't want to try and rely on them, because they're a slow to recruit capital only, and they'll waste a lot of your time in order to get the specific path combo you're looking for. Um, now, they do have a second shape, they can turn into Hunter Spiders, so they're more durable than they look. And that is kind of their saving grace, because they can turn into those, pretty much those same hunter spiders with the high HP and then run away. Which is nice, but overall they're still just not great. Uh, last commanders, you have the sorceress. The sorceress is also capital only, which is weird, but I guess makes sense from a kind of a fluff perspective. The nice thing about the sorceress is that while she's a crap combat mage, um, she's a good researcher. 85 gold for 11 research points, that's fine. And they randomly summon giant spiders. Um, the giant spiders are garbage units. Uh, I think I have a couple over here. Yeah, these great spiders, uh, they're bad units, but they have protection at least, which is better than the spider riders. Um, they're undisciplined and they have magic resistance 4 is the big problem. Uh, but you can you get them for free, so you can just kind of throw them into your armies and they run forward and uh, web people up and bite them with death poison. So they can inflict a little bit of attrition, um, which is better than nothing. Like I said, they're undisciplined and not fantastic, but hey, free garbage is better than nothing free, right? And then finally you have the Bane Spider, and the Bane Spider is your commander version of the Spider Warrior. Um, 
the Bane Spider is a recruitment point one assassin, so you could recruit two at a time. And honestly, especially because he starts with heavy plate armor, yes, I know, he's a stealthy man wearing heavy clanking plate armor, um, and Bane Blades, a Bane Blade, which is a magic item you can forge, and then also a Bane Dagger, which is actually unforgeable, I believe. Um, he can scale walls, he has dark vision, he has forest survival, he would be a really, really good assassin, except he's combat speed 9. So, especially by the mid-game, he will very, very slowly clank his way up to wizards and then tend to just get murdered, because the wizards will, although they are stupid in assassinations, at combat speed 9, by the time you can get up to them, they'll usually cast a spell. Also, he's capital only, so anytime you're recruiting Bane Spiders in your capital is time you're not recruiting black sorcerers or sorceresses. It's an interesting conundrum. Um, if you give them units that increase their combat speed, like the... Uh, there's a pair of nature boots that increase, that double your combat speed. They give you uh, plus 100% swiftness, which effectively doubles your combat speed. At which point they can be fairly effective. Um, if you give them some Pokemon items, like the handful of acorns or something like that, to distract the mage, they can be fairly effective. They're not bad, and having recruitment point one assassins is a, a good quality, a strong quality in a nation. They're just not very good at the job, especially because they're very expensive. If one of these assassins dies in the process of killing a mage, you may have actually lost money, because a lot of mages are cheaper than 110 gold. I mean, sorceresses are cheaper than that. Um, most other nations' cheap, spammable mages are cheaper than that, I think. So, for example, the, well, the Hurrim Priest is more expensive than that. Um, but the Akla is cheaper than that, that Nazca gets. I don't even know exactly what nations are in this test game. Mystics are a little bit more expensive, but only barely. Um, Arcosavale's healer priestesses are exactly the same price. If we look at Flegra, oh yeah, shackled mages are significantly cheaper. So, you know, it's often not a fantastic trade to trade one of those assassins or a mage, especially not because in order to make them effective at all, you've probably given them some gear. So. Basically, this is the issue with Machaka. Their whole lineup is sort of mediocre and unfocused. Um, your path spread on your mages is too wide, and that can become a problem. That, that sounds like a weird thing to complain about, right? But it actually does become a problem, because when one of these guys randoms one nature, that means that you've spent all this these two capital recruitment turns getting a mage who's just mediocre at a whole bunch of things instead of being actually good at anything. Um, when one of these guys randoms Earth, same thing. You've spent the time and the money to recruit him, and he's not cheap to recruit for a mage who's just sort of not good at stuff. Instead of a mage that's... If he's Nature 3, he's good at stuff. If he's Death 2, he's pretty good at stuff. If he's Fire 2, okay, we, we'll take it. Like, we'll accept it. But if he's Fire 1, Death 1, Nature 2, Earth 1, he's not good at things. And he's 200 gold, which is a little too expensive for mages who aren't good at things. So that's the issue with Machaka. Um, in the mid-game and the late game, it's hard to focus them. Now, Machaka does have some good points. They have a lot of nature magic. You will get a number of those nature three mages throughout the game. You'll also get, from your black sorcerers, you'll get earth three, eventually. You'll get fire three. You'll get death two from either black sorcerers or just regular sorcerers give you death two, actually. And regular sorcerers are recruit in any fort. So. You do have those options going for you. You can also have good research, because your sorceresses are good researchers, and your sorcerers um, are fast researchers. They're not price efficient for it, but they're super, super fast. 15 research points per turn is faster than a lot of other nations can research. So if you can start pumping these guys out, your research rate will, go, will climb very quickly. Once you get Construction 6, you can start forging Lightless Lanterns. If you have excess Death Gems, you can forge Skull Mentors. You have a lot of ways to ratchet your research up. The problem is getting there, because your troops are either bad or hard to mass, and everybody knows it. Everybody knows that Middle Age Machaka is not very good, especially in the early game, so you're a prime rush target. That can become a problem, and that is one reason why I picked the god that I did in this game. Obviously my god is dead in this game, so let's talk about god design. I think this is a good time for it. We've kind of gone over the the overall nation. Basically, early expansion is easy for Machaka. Early wars are not, because other people tend to hit their combat magic before you do, and their combat magic tends to be better than yours. 
Um, in terms of middle-aged Machaka, your only real reliable paths, like I said, are nature, which means that your combat magic is Alteration 5, Wooden Warriors. Um, that's a little late. That's a little late for early combat magic. Beyond that, you've got, you know, you can have a little bit of fire, you can have a little bit of death, but that doesn't really give you a whole lot. You can get Earth Meld, which is once again down Alteration, but that requires a random... Or it requires, it. actually you can't even get it on a random, it requires black sorcerers, because sorcerers don't have earth. Um, in terms of fire, you could go down evocation to try and get fireball, but that relies on a 25% random, or your, you know, black sorcerers once again. So you're just not going to have a lot of it early on. Or you could go down enchantment to try and get raised skeletons active, but once again, 25% random... Not great. And of course you could always go down Conjuration. Hitting Conjuration level 3 would give many of your randoms something they could do. They could at least summon an, a power and then summon elementals. That's probably your safest bet real early on. It also gets you your only national spells, neither of which are very good. But Pride of Lions to summon 10 Great Lions can be cheap chaff. Herd of Elephants if you need Tramplers for some specific reason, that's fine. These are fine spells, just not great ones. Herd of Elephants is overpriced, actually, but Pride of Lions is a pretty good chaff spell. But you just don't have a lot of early combat magic, so if somebody rushes you, you are often in dire straits very quickly. Let's pull out and look at God Design for a moment. I'm just going to quit out of this, and we are going to look at creating a Pretender God for Machaka. Machaka has the same selection of Pretender God chassis as Early Age Machaka does, which includes a number of pretty decent expanders. Um, it also includes a national rainbow chassis, the Great Sorcerer, which replaces the Buddha Father that Early Age Machaka had. You may remember Funny Guy in my uh, Early Age Machaka game, Once More Into the Breach, was a Buddha Father. The Great Sorcerer is extremely cheap, and that's his main claim to fame. He also has Death One, which is a pretty good starting path, so if you want a rainbow on Middle Age Machaka, the Great Sorcerer is probably your best pick. Um, Master Enchanter or uh, Great Sage are probably your other competitors. Great Sage will really kickstart your research if you take him awake, and that may be useful for Middle Age Machaka because, like I said, you really have to get up to about level 5 in research before you start having reliably useful combat magic. The other way to go is to take an Expander, and honestly, for a nation that's often rushed, taking a, a big, scary Expander is probably a good idea. There's several decent options. Uh, you have the Worm. The Worm natively regenerates and has Earth and Water, which are good super combatant paths, and is amphibious, so can go underwater. Could be a solid choice. The Myrmecoleon is your cheapest choice, and has Berserker plus 5 plus good natural protection. So, when he Berserks, if you give him Earth 4, his prot is 22, when he Berserks, then it goes up to 27, which is very solid. The downside of the Myrmecoleon is there's no way to get him to regenerate, because he doesn't have nature, and taking nature on him is incredibly expensive. So he's a little riskier than a lot of other expanders. I like to take Earth-6 with the Hard Skin Bless for him. That pushes his protection up to, I think, about 32, because he has 18 plus uh, 4 for the Earth Magic, plus 5 for the Hard Skin, 27, and then he Berserks. So that's very solid. That makes him very hard to hurt in the early game. It won't save him against players. It will only make him a very good expander. Uh, you have the Bulls, which are great kind of budget trampling expanders with Earth and Nature cross paths, which are great. The Great Black Bull has blood if you want to try to get into blood. You also have the Golden Lion, who is an interesting national choice. He has fear and he has fire and nature cross paths. Um, early Age Machaka could take him too. So with him, you can do something funny like a, like a regeneration and plus attack skill bless. You would do something like this. Um, you'd have to dump some of your other scales in order to get that much. You might go down to four. Then you could take, like, attack skill, superior morale, and, uh, say, regeneration. Something like that could actually be pretty solid for you, because if you'll remember, one of the things I talked about with the Black Hunters is that they have this long spear that can repel. Repel keys off your attack skill. So if your attack skill gets buffed, your repel gets buffed, and if you buff this attack skill up to 16 or 17, uh, Black Hunters can repel attacks very, very effectively. That, in combination with the web preventing people from attacking them, is one way to help these guys survive. Anyway, so this is an option. 
Uh, a regenerating golden lion is a pretty solid expander. The regeneration will keep him alive even with mediocre protection, and the fear will tend to rout enemies, plus he gets multiple attacks at high strength values. However, there's one expander option that is probably superior to any of the others, albeit more expensive, and that is the Colossal Fetish. The Colossal Fetish is the only Dominion 4 Pretender chassis that can move. Um, it starts off with a lot of natural protection, it has earth and nature magic, it has blunt and pierce resistant, it's inanimate and mindless, and an innate spellcaster. So what that means is, immune to most astral spells that are dangerous, um, immune to another subset of dangerous spells, best expander paths, and casts spells constantly while doing other things. At one spell per round, no matter how long the spell normally takes to cast. So the Colossal Fetish starts off a really good expander, and then transitions to being a monstrously effective spellcaster later in the game. Probably the best expanding option, like I said, especially because these are also the best super combatant paths. Now, caveat, he is inanimate, which means he can't regenerate, so there's no point taking regeneration for him. However, he can take hard skin. And if you take hard skin on him, then you can take pretty good scales. These are the scales. This is the god that I took in that game I was just showing you. This is my fetish, was the name of my god. Um, with hard skin, he's an extremely effective expander. What happened to him was Arcosophale declared war and attacked me, the Arcosophalian AI, which the AI sometimes just does. In a normal game, that wouldn't happen. Players tend not to want to risk attacking a, a colossal fetish because it's very, very dangerous. And the army that Arcos Folly attacked me with included one mystic, and that mystic had a spell that paralyzed the Colossal Fetish through his magic resistance with one shot. So the Colossal Fetish ended up paralyzed and got surrounded by troops and just sort of slowly worked down. Normally that would not happen, because the Colossal Fetish, as I said, casts spells every round. So when it goes into melee, what happens is the Colossal Fetish walks into melee, misses with its club attack, which only has seven attack, and then it casts Flying Shards at minimum range, and if it has Earth 6, then we can look at that spell, Flying Shards. Uh, flying Shards takes Earth 1, it fires uh, 2 extra projectiles per level. So if you have Earth 6, it fires 14 projectiles, each of which do 10 blunt or slashing damage. And if it fires those at the square directly next to it, then all 14 of those projectiles hit the same square, and it just deletes whoever happens to be in that square because they get hit by 140 damage. So it clears a square per turn when it's doing that. Oh, and this uh, it costs them it costs five fatigue when you have uh, Earth Six approximately. So that's how the colossal fetish kills things. It walks up there and starts casting flying shards, and they all explode. Um, alternatively, it casts what is it? Iron hands, I think. Iron fists of iron. That's right. Hits one person for, like, 40 damage. And it causes multiple effects if you have more earth. So, if it casts Fists of Iron, it hits a square next to it six times for about 40 damage. Which, as you may think, pretty much also deletes the square. Either of those spells work. Either of those spells make the uh, Colossal Fetish very, very deadly. Much more deadly than you would think by looking at its abysmal melee stat line. So that's why it's a good expander, that innate caster thing. And it's very, very rare, and I think it's unique. I think it's the only moving innate spellcaster pretender god. Um, Nazca has the Royal Malkis, which are also innate spellcasters that move. But they're kind of a special thing. In any case, if you want an awake expander, like I said, this guy is probably the best option. However, this bless doesn't help your spiders, actually. This bless, your spiders are still pretty solid expanders in large numbers, but they will still take casualties, because that hard skin only increases their protection to about 23. There are other options. Now, as I said, the Fire Bless is actually really good for Black Hunters, because it gives them better attack skill and lets them repel a lot better. There's another Bless that's also really good for them, which is Blood. So if you take, for example, the Fountain of Blood, you can take Blood Surge for literally 8 points. Literally 8 points. 
Blood Surge gives you, when you kill someone, plus three attack, plus three strength, defense, and reinvigoration. It's a fantastic little ability, and you can keep it up by just continuously killing people. Now, Black Hunters don't have trouble killing infantry when they run in, because they get this Lance Charge attack, which gets their charge bonus. Which is... This says this bonus damage is limited to half the strength of the charging unit. Well, this is actually a heavy weapon. It's limited to the full strength. And they have high combat speed, which is the limiting factor. So when they charge in, this actually hits for about 28 piercing damage. If their attack skill is high, then that is very likely to hit. It will then, if it's hitting at 28, then it will actually burst through shields and armor fairly effectively and kill a unit outright, at which point Blood Surge procs and pushes their attack skill and strength up higher. So one really good bless for them, actually, is Fire 6, Blood 4, because that way you give them two dots of attack skill, which increases their attack skill by 4 to 16. That means their repel is very, very effective. And it also means that they're very capable of hitting and killing someone with that lance charge, which then procs the blood surge, which increases their damage by 3, and it increases their attack by 3. Now you're looking at attack skill 19, and they're doing 17 damage with the spear. It doesn't affect the spider fangs, unfortunately. The spider fangs specifically do not add the uh, strength of the wielder because they're coming from the spider instead. So that's unfortunate, but it increases the damage of the spear attack, and a high damage piercing attack is very, very valuable. So this is a pretty solid bless. Now, we're negative on points here, so you could cut that down to four, take away one of the attack skill, put a superior morale on. That gives you some more points for scales, and I would probably at this point uh, increase productivity, or you can go up to neutral order since you do require recruitment points for a lot of your units. With 35 extra design points, you could then pump the points into Dominion. Now, you don't necessarily need this guy awake, actually, you realize at this point, because these are not incarnate blesses, and you're not really going to be doing anything with blood magic, so if you're taking an immobile with non-incarnate blesses, you can just take him imprisoned. And now, all of a sudden, you can have actually fantastic scales, and have the double attack skill bless, and have something else if you wanted to. Um, you could cut this back down to five, maybe. That would give you the points for two more scales. So you could have, like, maybe you could have luck three. You could go turmoil luck, maybe, if you wanted. Maybe one turmoil and three productivity. That looks pretty nice, right? That would give you the scales to recruit a bunch of your really resource-intensive troops. You're a little bit low on recruitment points, maybe, so maybe maybe dump that and, and do something like this. Okay, so now you've got good recruitment points, you've got really good resources, you've got good income, and your spiders can actually expand really, really well with a bless like this. I've tested this a couple times. It works very effectively, more effectively than you might think. Or, or you could take the... Uh, the less good scales, and now you have 290 more points, and now you say, well, okay, so what other problems do my sacreds have that could be fixed with more points? What if I were to take some death and give them undying? Because one of their major weaknesses is that they only have 13 hit points, right? So if they have 8 extra undying hit points, that could keep them alive in the, you know, in the initial engagement, then they die afterwards, but then they just turn into the spiders, and you take the spiders back to your capital to get remounted. Um, also, this guy in the late game can now summon vampires after he wakes up, which is pretty cool. And then maybe you go, okay, well, what about their low magic resistance? Or maybe they want magic weapons, or what have you, so you could add major magic resistance and magic weapons. None of these are incarnate blesses still, so it's fine that your guy is imprisoned. This might be a little too wide, but this is actually a viable strategy for Middle Age Machaka, I feel. The other way to do this is to take the Great Sorcerer. The Great Sorcerer, imprisoned, is actually a super efficient bless chassis because he only has 10 path point cost and his base cost is very low. So you can do this, and you still have points. So now I can add on minor magic resistance, and I can still take two more scales. So now I can do that. My scales are better, or I can reduce my misfortune if I want better luck. Um, I like taking luck three if I'm going scales with an imprisoned god, I really do. So in my position, I would probably take the luck three, maybe cut down one point of the magic, and like drop the astral. 
drop the astral and then maybe, I don't know, maybe cut out one point of the fire and replace it with minor fire resistance or something. But something like this. This could also work. I haven't done this in a multiplayer game yet, but like I said, I've tested it in single player. This seems like it actually functions pretty well. It doesn't make Black Hunters into Ziedens. Nothing can make them into Ziedens, nothing can make them into Anakites, which are the other sacreds that cost this much. They're not that good. But with an attack skill bless and blood surge on them, they're pretty solid. I can say that. Um, if you just want strictly survivability, on the other hand, what you can do is, in, instead of killing power, to max, ma max out survivability, um, you can get Earth-7 some kind of way, in which case you can give them Fortitude. And then with their high prot and Fortitude, plus the attack skill giving Repel, um, they're very hard to kill. They're extremely difficult to kill. This is a lot more expensive. If you're going to do this, then you probably want to take, I don't know, um, that saves you about 60 points. Uh, you might... Eh, I don't think taking the Myrmacoleon saves you points. You'd have to look into it. You'd have to figure out what would be cheaper to do that with. I haven't examined it. The Myrmacoleon might be cheaper. Yeah, the Myrmacoleon is actually a little cheaper. So now, yeah, you could do that. Uh, the Myrmacoleon... Eh, you're, you're minus four points now. Probably you'd drop the magic down to zero. Go up to five and... Something like that. Probably that instead. So yeah, this could work for the Myrmacoleon. This would also give you a pretty decent expander, because Fortitude on a Myrmacoleon will make it very tough. So now, well, he's imprisoned. Crap. Um, I guess this might be a situation where you might take an imprisoned monster for the memes. I'd probably take him awake, and then you'd have to uh, cut that down a little bit. Get rid of the fortune. You'd go misfortune. Oh, uh, you're still two points short. Bollocks. Okay, you can do that. That works. You're left 17 points over, but this is okay. And this gives you your uh, your decent expander, and it also gives you your spider bless, which helps those spiders survive a lot better. So there's a few options. Now, the thing about Middle Age Machaka always is what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to Alteration 5 as fast as possible. And if you can get to Alteration 5 and you have a Nature 3 random sorcerer, then you're kind of in with a shot at getting... Well, first of all, you now have Swarm. You now have uh, Barkskin, which makes your already fairly tough troops a lot tougher by giving them that natural protection to bump this up to 20 or 21 or whatever it is. Uh, you're in with a stab at getting Mother Oak which would increase your gem income a lot, and since you have a lot of nature mages running around, you're likely to have a pretty decent gem income. That is one argument for actually taking nature magic on your pretender. Um, you could construct a rainbow bless with this guy, or with a... Oh, I messed up. I pressed the wrong button. Hold, please. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Okay, we're back. Um, you could take this guy, or you could take uh, a monolith or something for a rainbow bless. In any case, you could take something that has nature and give it nature 5 as part of your imprisoned bless, or on an awake expander, you could take a great white bull and give him nature 7 and earth 4. Um, that's pretty popular because it works pretty well. Your scales won't be great, but you could probably pull off that. You'd have to go drain one. Not fantastic scales, but you can survive the drain because you have really good researchers, and you can survive the misfortune because, well, you just have to. Misfortune isn't that bad. And that gives you a pretty good rampaging around expander who can also, as soon as you hit Alt-5, just cast Mother Oak, as long as you've been saving up your nature gems. Um, so yeah, research-wise, my strategy with this nation, I think, would be just to rush Alt. You can get the Earth Magic, which your Black Sorcerers can use. You get the Nature Magic that your Sorcerers can use. Alt-4 gives you Swarm. Swarm is a powerful combat spell, so if you can get there quickly, you can use that to defend yourself in combination with your killy spider warriors. Spider warriors backed up by swarm are very effective. And you can just save up your nature gems, and if you hit uh, if you hit alt 5 at about turn 20 and you haven't spent any nature gems yet, you can do a little bit of alchemy and just cast mother oak immediately with your uh, with your expanding god with nature 5. So that might be a thought. Regeneration as a bless is useful for your super combatant. It's not useful for your black hunter in first form. 
but the second form is still sacred and it has 55 hit points, so that form benefits a lot from the regeneration. I just don't think it's worth tailoring a bless for the second form instead of the first form, because the first form is what you want to keep, and the first form is the one that has the multiple attacks and the, the repelling spear and all. So I think the first form is better to tailor your bless for. But in any case, that's Middle Age Machaka. They're not a super strong nation. Um, in particular, their late game plan is a little, a little rickety. Now, they do have the benefit that they have the Nature Death cross path, which is not very common. And the spells in Nature Death are where? Uh, they can cast this spell, Contact Lamia Queen, which summons a very, very powerful Lamia Queen commander with a lot of great randoms, including the potential to random blood. So that can be very handy. There's also a lower level version, Contact Lamia's, well, it's the same level. It summons Lamias, which regenerate at 50%. Um, so they're, they're pretty solid chaff, especially if you drop a few nature buffs on them. They can be very, very good. And they have a second form of Black Serpents, so solid. Um, you can cast Forest Troll Tribe very easily. You already have Death, so you don't really need the Death, but Troll Shamans are still good commanders and good mages. Um, with a little bit of work, you can awaken Ivy Queens. Eventually, you can get down to... Um, call the worm that walks. You can empower somebody to do that, if nothing else, because if you have nature 3, which you have from your sorcerers, you give them a thistle mace, now they're nature 4, you empower them once, now they're nature 5, and then they can cast uh, call the worm that walks. So you can get into immortals in the very late game if you survive that long. But that said, your late game is weaker than a lot of nations. Um, you only have death 2, unfortunately. If you had death 3, it would be a much stronger nation. Death 2 is enough to do the basic stuff, and you can get up to Mound Fiends, and then you can use Mound Fiends to ratchet up higher if you can spare the Death Gems for an Empowerment. So you have Death, you know, functionally. It's not quite as good as some of the most powerful Death Nations, though. So you're sort of second rate on Death. You're second rate on Nature, because you're good at Nature, but you're not as good at Nature as some of the other nations. Pangea, mostly. Um, you're definitely second rate on Earth. You're only reliable Earth is on black sorcerers, which are slow to recruit capital only, so while you have decent earth, it's not common. Um, and you're kind of mediocre on fire, but being mediocre on fire isn't enough, because fire is not a great path. That said, you just really don't have the, the magical muscle and the magical reliability to compete with a lot of other nations, so it becomes tricky. Not gonna lie about it. Middle-Age Machaka is not the best nation around, but it is fun. It is, it is always uh, kind of fun to be sneaking a Bane Spider and ten Spider Warriors deep into enemy territory on a super secret assassination mission. Not gonna lie, that's always a good time. So in any case, thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully this has become useful to you. I know Lucid Tactics a little while ago did a game where he played Middle Age Machaka in multiplayer. Check that out, because he had some interesting things to say about Middle Age Machaka. I don't think he said all the same things I have. I certainly haven't said all the things he did. So take a look at those two perspectives see what you think. Um, they're an interesting nation. Like I said, they're not great. They're, I don't think they're quite as bad as a lot of people make them out to be, and I think they can be usable. Now, I will be using this nation in an upcoming game. I have a uh, another subscribers game starting up, actually starting up right now, and will be going up on the channel in probably a couple of weeks. So, uh, and I'll be playing Middle Age Machaka. So we'll see, uh, See if you can figure out if I've given away my strategy and uh, what it is that I'm doing. It should be a good time. Now, I may end up just absolutely annihilated, given <laughs> who I'm starting next to, but we'll see how it goes. Cross your fingers, knock on wood, should be a good time. If you'd like to get into these subscriber games, by the way, uh, join my Discord channel. Link is in the description below. Uh, first dibs on spots, of course, does go to Patreon supporters. So if you are a Patreon supporter, you get the first shot at getting into one of those games, and they do tend to fill up pretty quick. But as long as you're on the Discord, when I announce the game, you have a chance to get in. Just pop your name into the hat, and we will uh, we'll make sure that you get a chance to play. I want everybody to get a chance to play, if at all possible. But in any case, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.